Hey guys, if you've got one of our upright freezers where we're getting ice and frost inside of your fan, we're going to be performing RF2006 today to show you guys how to properly correct that issue. Before you get started, make certain that you have all your proper PPE, gloves, glasses, anything else you feel is needed to be safe. All right, the first thing we want to do with this unit is we're going to check to see that our door gasket is making good contact. The door is even on both sides of the cabinet. That way we know that we are not getting air migration in or around our gasket on the front of the unit. So what I like to do is I will actually run my hands up and down the sides of the cabinet in comparison with the door to see if my door is shifted one way or the other. You can loosen the screws at the top of the hinge to make minor adjustments to the left or the right if your door is not aligned evenly with the cabinet. You also can do a visual inspection all the way around and verify where your gasket is making contact to see that it's getting good solid contact against the metal cabinet all the way around. Another check that we need to do before we get into our service flash, verify your magnet at the base of your door is actually making good contact with your reed switch down here at the bottom of the cabinet. To do this, all we have to do is close the door and verify that our light is actually turning off. Now pulling the magnet out and putting it against the reed switch is only going to tell you whether or not your reed switch is good. You need to verify with the door that that light is shutting off, that the reed switch is in fact turning off the light. The final check I want you to do is ensure that your gasket is snug inside of the channel. Just kind of pull on it, move all the way around, verify that it's not loose, that there's not some reason that air could be getting in behind that gasket through the channel. If all of that checks good, then let's go ahead and unplug the unit and let's get to our evaporator cover in the back of the freezer. All right, so now let's go ahead and remove the evaporator cover. There are four quarter inch screws that we're going to need to remove. All right, so I'm going to lean my cover forward. The potentiometer does still have a quick disconnect back here on the back wall, and there's a ground clip down here at the base I'm going to disconnect. Now I can pull my whole cover off and set this off to the side. So let's unhook our evaporator sensor. We're going to disconnect our fan connection, disconnect our thermistor, and then we're going to go after our quarter inch screw right here at the bottom of the fan assembly. All right, now we're going to use a flat blade. We're going to go in on the left hand side and just pry these clips until our entire housing is released. All right, to release, to gain access to our fan area, we're going to release this clip right here at the top. We're going to release this clip right here. There's a clip right here we've got to release. And then our last one is located right here. That's going to allow us access into our fan area. Now be careful that we don't rip this adhesive backing here at the top, but we need to increase the diameter of this drain hole right here. So we're going to cut this drain hole to be three quarters of an inch wide. All right, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to center our tape measure we're going to make a three quarter inch widening to this current hole. So I'm going to put a mark there and a mark there. And we're going to widen this hole to three quarters of an inch. 
All right, so let's go ahead and set our fan back into place. Ensure that all of our clips are locked back. Put our wire harness back in its little holder down here on the bottom. Now mine's not too wet, but if yours is wet, before we adhere any tape to it, let's dry it off, make sure that we get good contact, and then the kit comes with some poly tape, which I've gone ahead and cut out three little squares, and we're just going to apply our poly tape over these little holes to prevent any moisture migration through those holes. We would also install a piece of tape right here, but as you can see, mine's already got the tape on here. So I'm just gonna check to see that my tape is actually nice and secure. There's no air bubbles. It's got good adherence so that no moisture can migrate through there. All right, so we're also gonna use our poly tape and we're gonna run it across the back right here where our two clip holes are open to prevent any moisture from getting in through here. And this little opening down here that actually has our wire harness sitting in there. All right, so let's go ahead and move our, our evaporator out just a tiny bit. Very, very gentle on the lines. That's going to give us enough space here to where we can build up a little wall of aluminum tape coming from the aluminum that's already down here at the evaporator. Make certain that your wall is completely dry before we start adhering our tape to it. Again, we want to make certain that it gets good contact. We're attempting to make it as flat as possible, so any, any large ripples or rolls, try to flatten those out best that you can. We don't need to misdirect our water, our drain water, that could possibly, potentially be coming off of our fan assembly. Cool beans. All right, so let's go ahead and put our fan and our air tower back in place. I'm going to go ahead and reconnect my fan. Reconnect my thermistors. Put my sensor back on my evaporator. Push my evaporator back in. All right, let's put our one quarter inch screw back in that goes at the base of our fan assembly. So the kit comes with these two little foam strips as well. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the white foam strips that are already in place on this rear vap cover and we're gonna replace them with these black ones. All right, now that we got a nice clean cover, make certain that it's good and dry. We're gonna run our new gaskets right below the screw location on our rear evap cover. Just like that. And let's move to the one on the opposite side. Now we can reinstall our cover. Let's go ahead and reinstall our EVAP cover. Don't forget to reconnect your ground or your potentiometer. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall my shelves and my basket for the bottom, and we're gonna turn this thing around and get to the back. 
All right, so as you can see, my, my kit does come with a new rear cover um, for the jumper, the drain jumper. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and install the new one just because it's brandy new, even though this one's already got the cover on it. Um, and the main thing we're looking at with the jumper, if your jumper did not have tape holding it together, we need to replace this jumper. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull our drain line out of our drain pan. We can dispose of that. We got our jumper here. Now to remove this jumper, we're gonna push it downwards a little just to get it past our condenser coil. And as you can see, mine doesn't have the tape around it. That's why I'm replacing it. This one is a bit different. Make certain that whenever you're pushing your fitting back up, you do feel like it's nice and snug, secure against the base. Let's go ahead and put our new drain line in. Now make certain that the tip of this actually goes. There's a holder down here in the drain pan. Make certain whenever you're putting the rear panel back on, you are aligning your power cord with the cutout here at the bottom. We're gonna put our cover back in place. Let's spin this thing back around, plug it in, check for proper operation. All right, so we properly checked over our appliance to ensure that the door is closing properly and we have performed RF2006.